All right, today we're going to talk about blind cross basics. So we've done the mic check, we've got our thumbs up, and we're going to talk about three things today. We're going to talk about... Oh, you, we're, I'm sorry, we're going to talk about three things today. Number one, we're going to talk about when to do your blind crosses. As you know, we also have the rear cross and the front cross. So we're going to talk about when you want to use each one, give you a couple of specific scenarios telling you when blind crosses are a really good choice. Number two, we're going to talk about blind cross execution and the importance of reconnecting with your dog. It's probably the most important thing that you need to know about doing really great blind crosses. The third thing we're going to talk about is timing on the course. When you're actually running a course, you're running a sequence, when should you start your blind cross? When should you be finished with your blind cross? We're going to get to all of that today. So I think you guys are going to find this really helpful. I want to get a quick uh, sense for how many of you out, out there are not using blind crosses in your hand, handling uh, regularly. So if you're not doing a blind cross, um, let's ask for the uh, thumbs up. So give me a thumbs up if you're not using a blind cross, or if you've never used a blind cross, or you only do it once in a great while, this is something you're interested in, you need help with, you kind of want to get our thoughts on that. So give us a thumbs up so we can get a sense for how many of you are kind of totally new to blind crosses. All right, while you guys do that, we're going to go ahead and start with the first thing, and that's when do you want to use the blind cross? What's, what's the big deal about the blind cross? Here what? comes the thumbs up. Oh, they're all coming? Yeah, okay. All coming. Why is everybody so excited about blind crosses? Um, you know, what's, what's the big deal here? The first thing I want to do is compare the blind cross to the front cross. I'm going to back up to the field here. We're going to go over a couple of things. Let's say my dog is taking this purple jump straight this way, and I'm going to turn him to this blue jump over here, okay? Let's say I'm going to do the front cross. I'm running with my dog. My dog takes this purple jump. Here comes the front cross. Perfectly executed front cross. I've changed sides. My dog is now on my left. We take this blue jump. So when I did my front cross, as the handler, I was headed straight, and I did a big, 360 degree turn in place. See that? I'm facing forward and I did a full circle in place. Oh, you do it twice, you're already dizzy. All right? It's a physically difficult maneuver for the handler to do. Okay? A lot of you out there may be a little bit older, a little bit less coordinated. Maybe you've had a recent injury, a knee replacement, a hip replacement. Um, you fall down a lot, you trip on the grass. Happens to me all the time. It usually happens when I'm doing front crosses. So you can see that it's physically demand demanding on the handler to do a full front cross in place. Now let's compare it to the blind cross. I've got my dog on the right, and now I look over my left shoulder, I've got the dog on the left. So the handler doesn't have to do any turning in place. I'm running. And now I'm just switching arms and looking over here. It's physically a much easier maneuver for me to do. So a lot of people think of blind crosses as something only fast young people can do or should do. But actually, the people who use it and get a lot of benefit from it are those who struggle with physically doing front crosses. So any spot where you have a slight angle turn like that and a front cross makes you do a whole kind of spin 360 in place, the blind cross is going to give you a physical advantage as the handler. All that time I spend spinning in place, I can now be running all out and get even further ahead of my dog. It doesn't matter how fast or slow I am, I'm going to have more of, a, of, a, of an advantage compared to the front cross. All right, so slight turns, that's great. Now, what about sharp angle turns? Sharp angle turns are a little bit different. That's where we think the front cross has a little bit more advantage than the blind cross. So for example, I don't really want to blind cross if I'm going to go from here over here and I want to take this jump this way. And let me show you why. First, I'll show you the front cross. As I come in for the front cross, as soon as I turn toward my dog, the very moment I start turning toward my dog, my dog is going to turn toward me, okay? They're not going to look at that jump anymore, that off course jump. They're going to turn toward me, come in here, and now I can put them over this jump. I've done the hand, 
hand change. Compare that to the blind cross. The blind cross, until they see the hand change, until they see that, they are going to drive straight for that off course in extension because they're on this arm. All right, does that make sense? So this whole time, now I blind. Not blinded yet, now I blinded. So this whole time, what does this look like to you? Well, to me and to your dog, it looks like we, we, we're doing this pinwheel. We're going off to that off course. And this is why if you try to blind cross on very sharp turns, instead of front crossing, generally, you're gonna get wide turns, okay? And we don't want wide turns. We want tight turns. That's why the front cross, even though you're not done with the front cross, you've just started the front cross, your dog is already turning toward you. That's why the front cross is so great on sharp turns. Blind cross, not good, because the dog doesn't see it coming until you're done with the blind cross, okay? So that's the theory in a nutshell. That's why we're looking for these slight angle turns. We want to kind of eliminate that pinwheel effect that you get on sharp turns. Now, having said all that, we have a rule of thumb, and it's 45 degrees. If your angle of turn is more than 45 degrees, front cross, rear cross. If it's a slight angle turn, like the example I showed you earlier, it's a great place for a blind cross. These are not hard and fast rules. Everybody does it differently. This is just our rule of thumb, my personal rule of thumb. There are very good handlers, world championship handlers. In fact, the example I'm gonna cite here is Pavel Vakonic. Two years ago, got first and second place, individual gold and silver at the Agility World Championships with his two border collies, excellent border collies, Fiona and Ikea. Uh, he's a really nice guy. He does a lot of blind crosses, and he does them uh, very often on 90-degree turns, very sharp turns. So everybody's a little bit different. Everybody has a different handling system. He has uh, certain advantages, certainly, with the two very agile border collies. He himself is very tall and athletic as well. Uh, but I did want to put that out there. So different people are going to do different things for um, blind crosses. But that's a very good rule of thumb that we've given you. Slight angle turns, blind crosses, sharp turns, do your fronts, do your rears. Okay, now we've addressed kind of when you do your blind crosses. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the actual physical execution of the blind cross. And we've got a special treat for you today. We've got Sarah Baker, she's coming to you from uh, Washington here. Two time AKC, American Kennel Club, national agility champion at 20 inches, also the preferred national champion with her uh, Labrador Retriever Rice. And we've got a very cool video for you. So we're gonna go ahead and go to her now. The teaching phase. The teaching phase. To practice and begin teaching blind crosses, I will first cue my dog to come to one side. Here I'm cueing him to come to my right side. And by doing that, I have my inside hand, my right hand out. And most importantly, I'm looking over my right shoulder at my dog. So I'm going to cue the right side, then switch to the left, and then release him. Release. Next I'm going to cue my left side, release him, and then switch. So I'll call him and then immediately I'm going to turn my shoulders away from him and reconnect with the new side. My right hand is now extended and I'm looking over my right shoulder to connect with him. And he switches. Instead of continuing to go to my left, he turns to come to my right side. Next I'm going to add more motion. So I'm going to release him to come to my right side and then switch to my left. Again, the most important part of blind crosses is the eye contact and the connection over the new side. It's not just about your hands. You need to look over the new shoulder and connect with your dog for a moment. As you and your dog get better, it is fun to play with doing a couple of blind crosses in a row. All right, so that was a great video from Sarah Baker. Thank you so much. And 
hopefully you see now the importance of connection and really reconnecting on these blind crosses. Um, the third thing that we're going to talk about is the timing involved in the execution of the blind cross. So the short answer is it depends, but basically you want to catch your dog at a commitment point before the blind cross actually happens. And you can blind cross after several different obstacles. Dog walk, seesaw, A-frame, so all your contacts, and the weave poles. Now those are kind of um, special obstacles. And they're special because your dog is actually physically engaged with those obstacles. So let's pretend this cone here is, for example, the A-frame. So I've got my dog on my right. When do I want to do this? When do I want to make the change from this to this? I want to do it when my dog is still on the A-frame and coming down. If my dog is already off of the A-frame and then I switch, that's going to be a problem. That's too late. Like so many things we do in agility, it is the most common mistake people, especially beginners, are going to make when they're doing blind crosses. They're just doing them too late. They're not finishing them um, quickly enough, in advance enough. The other place that you'll run into blind cross troubles is in the tunnel. So I will actually go ahead and walk out all the way here, although it's kind of far away. And if my dog is coming out of this tunnel and I want to blind it, and they come out first, and then I try to blind it, I'm going to get a wide turn. But if I move into my blind position so that this is the first thing the dog sees when they're exiting, I'm okay. So that's the kind of timing that we're looking for. If your dog is already out of the obstacle, you're probably too late. It is possible to blind cross too early. This brings us to another really great video. So Sarah's got a little more discussion for us, so let's go back to Sarah Baker. Here's a short sequence with a forward motion blind cross. And it is important to both cue the obstacle before you do the blind cross and to reconnect with your dog after you've done the blind cross. So I'm going to cue this jump, do a front cross. As Hops is coming around the wing, my inside hand is out. I'm giving him either a verbal jump cue or saying his name to make sure that he is looking where I'm pointing. And I'm making sure he knows to, that he is on my left side and should be headed for this jump. So I've cued the jump, and then I perform my blind cross while running forward. And now before he's taken off for the jump, my new hand is out, and I'm starting to look over my new shoulder. And as Hops comes over the bar, you can see him direct to my right side, and then commit to the jump. If you perform the blind cross too early and do not, do not cue the jump before the blind cross, your dog will most likely run around it. So here I do the front, but as Hops comes around the wing, I have not indicated this jump yet. I've already started my blind cross. My new hand is coming out and I'm starting to turn and look over the new shoulder. So as Hops comes around the wing, since he never was told to take the white jump, he comes to my right side, bypassing the jump, and gets a reward because that's what he should have done with those cues. Good boy! If you do not reconnect with your dog after the blind cross, or you do it late, your dog will run around the next obstacle. So here I've done the first front cross, and I appropriately cue the jump as Hops comes around the wing. But I should have already had my blind done now, so as Hops comes over the jump, he is still headed toward my left side. And now I've done it really late, and he comes around the jump and does not take it at all. And he again gets a reward. Good boy! So here's the blind cross correct again. Front cross. As he comes around the wing, I have cued the next jump. 
then I blind, reconnect with him to cue the next jump. Good job, puppy. All right. So those were some really great videos from Sarah Baker. Um, I think they're really, really helpful. And we're going to move into the demonstration portion of this Facebook Live. And while we're getting set up to do that, go ahead and start putting in your questions now so they're ready to go by the time we get to the Q&A part, which is going to be right after these demonstrations. Sarah's going to be uh, demoing with her Border Collie Venture. And we've got our small dog demo person back. And it's going to be Brittany and Trek. They'll be uh, jumping 12 inches. And also congratulations to Trek. Brittany and Trek were selected for the short list for uh, Team USA at the AKC World Team Tryout. So they will pick the final dog and the alternate from that smaller uh, list of competitors. So we're going to go ahead and start with uh, Sarah and Venture here. Let me move out of the way so you guys can see them OK. We're going to have all these sequences for you in a worksheet. <laughs> all right. And so he cut across her feet and took the wrong end of the tunnel. A very unexpected mistake, especially for a dog of his uh, caliber. And um, I'm not sure what she's doing here. It looks like she's going to bring in a cone maybe to help. Get better motion going. <laughs> better motion. She thinks maybe he just got a little ahead of her. She's going to try again. And so she executed the blind cross here in the tunnel. And so this is a blind cross where you turn against the dog. But the point of having all of you do this, especially at home, especially for those of you who have never done a blind cross, is it breaks the connection with your dog. You take your, do your eyes off the tunnel, and you have to find them again. And that's where you got to reach back, just like Sarah Baker was talking about. Get your head over the shoulder. You don't necessarily need to make that eye contact. Sometimes you're not able to, but you, you need to look over your shoulder, reach back with that arm to get your dog on the correct side. Okay, and I think Sarah's going to move on to the next sequence. Okay, the, with the extra blind. The next blind. Ready? So there's the first blind, and there's the second blind. Push. Very nicely done. And you're good to go. And so this is a nice, easy one to do because you have the same blind to start. And then the dog from that tunnel to this jump is on a pretty straight line. All right. And if we were going to front cross it, we would have to front cross it over there, which is awkward, right? If you were to front cross it over here, my dog would then expect to move into this direction of the course rather than pushing straight. What if I were to rear cross? Let's say you're not very good at rear crosses. Now look at this. You have to rear cross on a slice, turn the dog this way, and now you have to push. You got to rush in here to get this backside to blue. But by doing this blind cross, Sarah gets the best of all worlds. She doesn't have to do that ugly front cross. She gets to be ahead of her dog, and now it's very easy to push Venture to this backside. And that's where the blind cross can give you a tactical advantage over both the front cross and the rear cross. We've got Brittany out here. She's going to do the same sequence here with Trek with these two blinds. The nice easy one after the tunnel. Oh, oh. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. and we're, we're just going to come in here and set, set the bars. Very nice. So you see how it really lets her get into a very good position to handle this backside. And by being so far ahead, she gets to come in here, do a little bit of a decel to get a very nice turn here. A lot of people hate coming in here to do these sliced rear crosses because they lose control of this turn. And so their dog turns wide. And so that's why coming in for the blind cross gives you some advantages. Now she's going to do a little more advanced She's going to add a backside blind cross. So there's going to be three blind crosses here. Look for them. Okay. 
Beautifully done, beautifully done. That was totally awesome. So you got three blind crosses in there. We've got the sequences and the map set up for you so you can do this at home by yourself with your friends. She comes in here and she does a great job of reconnecting, getting the dog on this arm. If she had not done a great job, if she'd been too late or if her dog had seen this, Trek would have gone to this off course. So the first thing she had to do, reconnect, get over here. Once Trek is committed, just like Sarah Baker was talking about in her videos, she's got to come back, get Trek over here, and now she's able to generate the same advantage that she did with the earlier exercise, easily controlling the backside, and then showing you one more blind cross so you can combine that blind cross with your backside for all the same reasons. Here, the front cross, sometimes you can be in your dog's way a little bit. When you come through with the blind cross, you just get to run through and get out of your dog's way. Um, you may get less bar knocking on those backside blinds as opposed to backside front cross uh, combinations there. Okay, those were the demonstrations that we had. We're gonna move now into the question and answer portion, the Q&A, and we're also gonna have a worksheet with the courses and the sequences for you. That's gonna be at baddogagility.com forward slash blind cross, B-L-I-N-D-C-R-O-S-S. -S. Make sure you get the worksheet so you can go set up this very same sequence and practice your blind crosses, especially for those of you who have never tried them before. Start with the nice, easy tunnel ones first, Practice reconnecting with your dog, arm, head, look over the shoulder, and from there, go ahead and try the other exercises. All right, here are the questions. Uh, here's that one. All right, do border, no, oh, do, I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw BC and I thought border collie. Do BCs, meaning blind crosses, I'm assuming here, always cue extension? Um, that is a very good question. And I would say that the kind of blind crosses that we we're looking at and presented to you today, the answer is yes. These are going to be an extension. You could add deceleration, right, as part of a Q combination of sorts, right? In the same way that I might decelerate, let me give you an example. If I want a front cross here at green, and go in this direction, and I want a tight turn, I'm going to decelerate here, right? So it's certainly possible that I could decelerate, creating part of that tight turn, and then try and do a blind cross. Most people at that point, though, it's, it's physically more advantageous to just go ahead and front cross. Um, but in general, everything that we looked at today, yes, they are going to be jumping in extension. Uh, Melody wants to know, what's the most important thing to consider for beginner dogs and handlers? I think number one most important thing is the reconnecting of the blind cross. Anytime you do a blind cross, you are taking your eyes off of your dog. Okay, So you have to reconnect. If you don't reconnect, they can come to the wrong side, they can go off course, they'll slow down, um, they can run right behind you and not even know it. You'll see handlers completely lose track of their dogs, especially small dog people. <laughs> I don't want to single out small dog people, but, it's but it happens a lot. To lose a small it's it's dog. easier to lose a smaller dog uh, behind you. Uh, can I add one thing to that? Yes. About beginner handlers. The other thing that I would say is that uh, the blind cross is the cross where you take your eyes completely off of your dog. And that's uncomfortable for a lot of people. And they, they try to watch their dog for as long as they can and then flip around for the blind. Mm -hmm. But in doing that, it makes their blind late. So you, you need to practice this till it's comfortable and then you have to, you just have to trust that your dog is going to do it. And if they don't, then you can go back and look at the video and, and figure out, you know, what timing needs to be different or if there's some foundation work that you need to do. But during the actual ex execution, you have got to just do it and then concentrate on picking them back up on the other side. All right. Okay, and Mara is fearful of getting knocked down by your dog if you try to do a blind cross. Approximately how far ahead must you be if you want to do a blind cross? Some people do it very closely. Like the minimum distance you need is whatever distance that your dog isn't going to run into you, okay? Just like you're suspecting, 
it does happen where dogs and handlers um, collide. So in general, for blind crosses, the kind that we presented to you here today, not the kinds that happen at the wings, uh, for example, like that backside blind cross, you want to be as far ahead and away from your dog as possible up near the next obstacle. So that's the ideal spot. Uh, there should be a little bit of distance between you. I think it's hard or arbitrary to just say, well, you need to be four feet or 10 feet or eight feet. That would be ideal. I think the best answer to give here is as far ahead as you need to be. And if you're looking at a course or walking a course and you suspect that you're not gonna be far enough ahead to do the blind, you're going to have to do a rear cross. Yeah, I think it comes down to your own comfort level. So some people are comfortable cutting it really close. Some people aren't. So, um, you know, for myself, you know, I want to have a good amount of distance. So I'm going to cut out any, any blinds, like he said, where I feel like it's iffy. Uh, and, but there's other people that can successfully make those blinds and, and have the comfort level to do it. So, and, and especially if you have a large dog, you do have to be careful for yourself and your dog for safety. Um, oh, this one. Do you use blinds on straight lines only or do you use blinds on a turn too? Yes, you can do them on straight lines, um, on turns as well. And I think earlier we gave like 45 degrees as an approximate kind of border. So it's straight to about here, but not 90 degrees and not way back the other way. So yes, um, that was from Mulan. Uh, Michelle wants to know if we have a recommendation for how far ahead you should oh, be with a running A-frame when performing a blind cross. Um, yeah, so as the dog is coming up over the apex of the A-frame, I would ideally like to be flashing across the bottom no later than that. That's how early your dog needs that information, especially with a running A-frame. A lot of people think that um, the dogs don't decide where they're going, left, straight, or right with a running A-frame until their dog is pushing off the bottom, okay? Totally false. As the dog is coming up over the apex, they would already like to know, am I turning left, right, or am I going straight, okay? And in the context of the blind cross, that means you need to be getting through your blind cross as they're coming up over the apex. If they're coming up over the apex, they see you at the bottom, right? Because they know when they got up on the A-frame, let's say Sarah is the, is the dog, okay? Oh, she's, going, <laughs> she's, she's going up. She's going up the A-frame, right? Uh -huh. So as she goes up, she knows I'm on the left side, okay? So her default is she's turning left or going straight, all right? Unless there, a verbal comes at the apex, she's not turning right. Now she comes up over the top. She can't see me anymore because I'm ahead, right? As they take the A-frame, they can no longer see the handler who's ahead. Now she comes up over the apex. Now she can see me, but now she sees this. She sees this transition. and. And as she starts to come down, now she sees this. Well, she knows very clearly now. We're either going straight or to the right. Okay, and that's when they need the information. If she comes all the way down, and I'm on this side, and then as she gets to the bottom, I try to jump in front of her and do this blind cross, you're at serious risk of collision because the dog is really committed to the idea of going left or straight, this quadrant, okay? But you're trying to send the dog this quadrant. So I think the timing of it is the apex. Um, I mean, in theory, you, you could get there even sooner. Then to the dog, it just looks like magical teleportation, right? You're on the left side, the dog comes over, and now you're magically on the right side, right? So you can definitely do it earlier than that, but no later than coming over the apex with a running A-frame. And I have a dog with a running A-frame, that's what you need to do to get the really good blinds in. Let them know there will be a replay. There will be a replay. It will be on YouTube later. The video is usually a little bit higher quality. Usually we'll clip out the first 20 seconds of dead air time where we're trying to figure out the audiovisual stuff. So that's usually a good thing to send to your friends. Um, going around the jump? If your dog is going around the jump when you're doing these blind crosses, it means you're not committing um, the dog to the obstacle. So you have to commit the dog to the obstacle before you can do your your blind cross, the best way to do that is usually with your food, your toy, your reinforcement. So you're going to reward the dog um, and then go ahead and add your blind cross. So say for example, we were doing this one. Dog goes into that end of the tunnel, comes out here, 
and then you do your blind cross and the dog is like cutting and not doing it, this is where you can throw a toy and then as you throw the toy, go ahead and blind cross. Your dog will pick up the toy and bring it to you or eat the food and then you can give them more food over here as well. Here, I think on this setup here, if they miss that jump, then you were probably blinding too early. And that's what Sarah Baker covered in her video. You right. start to blind too early and you pull them off of the jump before this blind. If they're taking that jump and missing this jump, it could be because um, you obscured the jump or you, you didn't get through the blind and reveal the jump in time. Maybe they even go to the backside of this jump or something like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just about getting the timing and the position just right. And um, some sequences are going to be easier for you to get everything to line up just right. And some, there's going to be a very narrow window where it has to be at one particular time and your position has to be perfect, no leeway. On some of these slices, you may need to make sure that you're facing this way. So you're right, I think you're probably, he's probably describing what you're describing. So if she's the dog here and she's at the takeoff point and she's looking like this, She's over the bar, and I'm still on the wrong arm. This is the wrong arm. I haven't done the blind cross yet. Now take a big step. Okay, so now I do it late, and I do like this. All my motion is this way. Guess what? Dog's just coming with me. The dog is just going to come with me. They're going to bypass this every time. So that might be what's happening to you. So now let's take Sarah back. She's at the takeoff point, right? And now, though, I'm like this, right? So this is much more promising. Now I only got to take one step in this direction to set the proper line, and now I can go back to goofing off and heading off in a different direction or getting ready for my next maneuver. So that'll help you out. Just make sure you're taking one step in that direction and that your blind cross isn't late. Okay, Chris wants to know, what criteria do you have to decide a blind cross is the best cross you can use? Um, it just depends on how the walkthrough goes. You look at a course map, you look at the setup, and you decide. Um, is a blind cross going to give me some kind of advantage that I really need? On most courses, uh, every weekend trial, a blind cross is really not going to help me or hurt me either way if I choose to use it. On some of the more difficult international courses where I really need to cover a lot of ground, blind crosses are going to give me a distinct advantage over the front cross where I spin entirely in place. You'll need to go back and watch the earlier portion of the show where I talked about that. Um, um, Mulan wants to know what are our thoughts on controlling turns using a blind versus a front cross. Again, sharp turns, I'm going to go and lean heavily on the front cross. Um, slight angle turns, I'm going to be looking at the blind cross and that's to keep my forward motion going as the handler and covering those long straight distances that you see on a lot of courses now, not just international courses, national level courses, Westminster, AKC Nationals, USDAA shows, uh, premier courses, biathlon, very, very common. You see it all around the world, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Great Britain. Uh, Judy wants to know, will you trust the difference between a blind cross and a rear cross? I did mean to do that. The yeah, best... You want to be the dog again? Yeah. Okay. Somebody said that helped. Okay. So. So if Sarah's the dog here, I send Sarah into the tunnel. And I'm going to do this rear cross. So I come, I set up my rear cross here. And then as I cut behind her, sometimes if that blue jump, go ahead and freeze. Sometimes that blue jump is a slight turn only. It's not a big turn. And it's really far away. So when I do this rear cross, my dog turns too tightly right? And they come with me and they miss this jump, okay? That's when it's really great. We, I like to call these gray area, gray zone rear crosses, where the dog can't really distinguish very well, are we rear crossing and turning tight, or are we rear crossing and going far away? So if the dog can't really tell, then I want to be ahead and use some version of the blind cross to show very clearly they got a long way to run. So usually blind crosses, my two rules of thumb are small angle of turn or straight line, big distances. That's where I really want to get the blind cross. That's where the blind cross is going to give you a big advantage over rear cross and front cross handlers.
or people who use those maneuvers in those spots. All right, I think that's all the questions. So don't forget, get the worksheet, baddogagility.com forward slash blind cross. If you have any other questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. We do come behind, check and answer all of those comments, of course. Share with your friends, but most importantly, give it a try. Look for a spot at your next trial where you might put in a blind cross. At least uh, try it in your walkthrough. And uh, if you get a chance to do it on the course, go for it. Happy training.